And we are back here on KFY Mornings. It is 735. It's this Thursday. That means that's that line that's blinking there. Jerry, you're on the other side of it. Good morning. The car pro. Hello, fellas. Good morning. Merry Christmas to you. <laughs> you too, Christmas. bud. What do, you, what do you got for us this week? Oh, I got a beauty this week. Yeah. I'll tell you what. I noticed it's, that. As many cards as I'm in and out of, it's hard to get me to just kind of get giddy over a vehicle. But I got to say, Lincoln did it this time. Uh, really? This is the, yeah. This is the new 2020 Aviator. And this fills a hole for them because for some people, the Navigator is just too big and it's just too expensive. And then the next one down was the Nautilus, which was the eventual vehicle that took over from the MKX, if you remember that from many years. But it's a five-passenger, so they had to do something with those people who are in the middle. So this Aviator is a three-row rear-wheel drive. Now, it comes all-wheel drive like the one I'm driving, but the point is they changed the chassis from what's known as a crossover which is a car chassis, to a truck chassis. And now it's a rear-wheel drive. It's it's much like the new 2020 Ford Explorer that came out, except with many, many more amenities inside. It's got second-row captain's chairs, uh, which is nice, especially if you're putting people into the third-row seat. And it's got a good amount of cargo area. But this thing's got some nice touches. I mean, really cool stuff that, you know, I was impressed with. I, I thought Lincoln just kind of thought of everything with it besides it looking good uh it's got a three liter v6 under the hood putting out 400 horses which is plenty uh 10 speed automatic transmission it is available in a hybrid version which believe it or not puts out almost 500 horses so it's got uh it's got electric doors meaning that one little touch instead of pulling a handle one little touch on the inside or outside will pop the door open, just like a Corvette, uh, if you've ever experienced one of those. And the seats, oh my goodness, both the front seats have 30-way power adjustments. And it, you've even got separate thigh supports. So if, you wanted, if you're taking a trip and you wanted to raise your right leg up but not raise your left one up, you can do that with I'll the get push out. of a button. I'm uh, serious. I'm, I'm telling you, it, this thing... Is just amazing, and probably the most unusual thing about this vehicle is typically you get in a car, you got the door open, you're putting the key in, or you're fixing to hit the uh, the start button, like most cars have today, and you hear these annoying chimes, and and you kind of get used to the chimes of your car, where you don't notice them all that much anymore. Well, it's different with this Lincoln. They had the Detroit Symphony Orchestra record music to take the place of the chime, and it's music that was written just for the vehicle. So it's very pleasant when you get in your Lincoln Aviator and you hit the start button or you've left the door open or whatever. I mean, it's noticeable. It's just things like that. I I, mean, throughout the season. I think Dave's regretting his uh, recent purchase of a Highlander. No, I'm, I, I'm just, I'm just saying, is it possible just to go too far with the Maybe. car? Maybe, uh, Jerry. I remember when they came out with the, the keyless. What was it? The keyless enter, entry. And I yeah. thought, how yeah. dumb, how stupid. You mean you're too lazy to stick the key in the door and you know unlock it? I, I just thought that was the most ridiculous thing I'd seen until I had one, and yeah. that was that was pretty handy. <laughs> It's, you know, it's 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 not digging for keys, and the the ladies love it because they don't want to dig through their purse to find their keys, and they don't have to. They just, you know, the door will open even if it's locked if the key's on you, and then you just hit the start button, and you're off. Yeah. Uh, it, 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 you're, maybe there is – I don't know if you can go too far or not. I think hey. it's just what people like, you so- know? So let me ask you this, and, and this is just because of how, how much you, you seem to love this. Would you, now I'm going to put you on the spot here, would you give up your Land Rover for one? No. No, just just because of the the horsepower on the Land Rover. I mean, I'm a horsepower guy, 518. Now, if I were driving, if, I, if when I get a chance, and I'm sure I will, 
to review the hybrid version of this that's putting out 500 horses, that's a possibility. It, because I'll tell you, the features on this Lincoln are much greater than they are on the Land Rover. Yeah. Well, hey, Jerry, I, I fail to understand why that they have made this a rear-wheel drive. Well, I think, you know, it was just – it was because there are just a lot of people out there that want rear-wheel drives. There's a, there's there's so many front-wheel drive alternatives. I mean, everybody's got that, but there's just a very few rear-wheel drives. The Toyota 4Runners 1, Jeep Grand Cherokee, Dodge Durango. I mean, there's just not that many of them out there. And I think they just wanted a different ride and feel and something that's got some towing power. And I will tell you guys, I believe with all my heart that a, a truck-based SUV, looking at the ones I just mentioned of other brands, a truck-based SUV will last longer. And it's just it's just a tougher vehicle. So I think that was part of the process. And, of course, Explorer is a whole different ball game as far as, amenities and how nice it is inside, et cetera. But I think it probably stemmed from the fact that studies showed that Explorer owners wanted rear-wheel drive or an all-wheel drive alternative, and the Explorer and this one are on the same chassis. So I don't know that if, if Aviator was a standalone vehicle, not a sister to the Ford, I don't know that they would have done it. They may have. But, I mean, for me, that's exactly what I'd want. I don't think I've ever owned an all-wheel drive, to be honest. I've, I've owned rear-wheel drives and front-wheel drives. And I can tell you I'd rather rear-wheel drive any day of the week. Um, those front-wheel drives, I cannot get my car back to the uh, to the uh, the tire store fast enough to rotate the tires for it not to tear up that those front tires really bad. Yeah, torque steer where your steering wheel goes to the left or right upon pretty heavy acceleration, they have that, that's gotten better over the years, but it, it will chew tires. There's no doubt about it. Now, that front-wheel drive, when you guys get that snow out there, uh, that is year. nice. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, exactly. But i got to tell you, even I, if I were in Florida, I'd want an all-wheel drive just for the way – that it handles. Yeah. It handles so much better when it's distributing that power out through the wheels that's needed. It's a different ride and drive. It's nice if there is inclement weather, but even when there's not any inclement weather, there's a difference in the way an all-wheel drive and a rear-wheel or front-wheel vehicle drives. Yeah. So, Jerry, what do you have going on on carprousa.com? You know, it, I know there's going to be a lot of people who are in the market to buy a car next week. Uh, the last week of the year is the biggest week of the year, always. So this, this uh, for now, I've got the reasons why December is the month to buy, and I go through what the, you know, kind of what the mindset of the dealers are, the mindset of the automakers, the incentive enhancements that are out there, and then I give tips for in a separate article. I give tips for how to buy a car at the end of the year because you got to be a little bit more patient. The dealers are busy. This is their busiest time of the year. Uh, and some things that you can do in advance, like getting on to a dealer's website that you're going to visit and and pick a car if you can that's closest to what you think you want. So And then let them know about this so they can have it pulled up and ready. All these things take – they take uh, – it. It's so time consuming. It'll be so time consuming starting the 26th that if you take my tips here, it'll shorten the process and make things go smoother. Things such as don't forget to unfreeze your credit report if you if you've done that because that is a major obstacle yeah. and takes hours to do. You know, getting an idea about your trade in, knowing what kind of interest rates you can get on your own at a bank or credit union, all those things will make the process go much much faster. All right. Well, Jerry, we, we've run out of time, but uh, you're, you're on this weekend uh, on Saturday from 11 to 1, and uh, it'll probably be, what, about uh, two to three weeks before we hear from you again? Uh, it will be. I won't be with you the next two Thursdays, yeah. but then I'll be right back. Sounds good. Well, we'll talk to you then, Jerry. Merry Christmas. Guys. Merry Christmas. Thank you.